Link building tactics. So uh, the link building industry, there's an entire industry within SEO, which is the link building industry, right? And there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, the way you go about link building is very, uh, this is the art rather than the science, and there's a million different things you can do. But here's just a couple of examples. One of my favorite ways to get started is with guest blogging. There's sites now even dedicated to connecting people to, to guest bloggers. But the premise is um, people who own blogs, they constantly want new content. Right? It's hard to pump out lots of really good content all the time. So if you can create good content and uh, sort of weave in or seed in your own anchor text, um, then you can create links for yourself. So I'm a dog training website. And I want to get my, my links up. Uh, I want to get links pointing to my site for dog training San Francisco. I go to another dog training website and I say, hey, here's an article called The Seven Ways to Teach Your Dog How to Do Backflips. And I write this article and then I end it with um, Tommy's website is a dog training website in San Francisco and, and give myself a link. Um, so that's the premise of guest blogging. There's two different ways to go about it, though. One is called horizontal guest blogging, and the other is vertical guest blogging. Um, so vertical guest blogging is exactly what I just described. right? It's finding people in your industry, creating content for them, and placing a link back to yourself. right? So I run an auto parts store. I find a blog that, uh, on antique cars. I write a great article on how rotating the tires of antique cars every six months helped them last longer. And at the end of the article, um, I end the article with a link back to the page on my site about classic car auto parts. Right? That's your standard guest blogging opportunity. So the problem is, is that people are usually in really small um, niches, and so they run out of websites to approach eventually. Right? They, they run out of opportunities to get links. So a really clever way. Um, to go about this is what's called horizontal guest blogging. Finding topics that aren't about what you do, but finding a way to relate and link back to yourself. For example, I'm an organic food store owner. I've just imported some awesome new broccoli from Eastern Europe. I'm trying to rank for the phrase organic broccoli San Francisco. The broccoli helps you lose weight, increase focus, get stronger, and helps creative thinking. I've already reached out and created articles for all the food bloggers in SF. They're getting annoyed. So I don't know where else to post. right? So I've exhausted all of my vertical guest blogging opportunities. So how do I do horizontal? Well, here's, here's how I could do it. So now you're thinking, OK, I'm trying to rank for organic broccoli San Francisco. How could I get an article on a new mom blog? How could I get an article on a video game blog, a music blog? Here's how, right? A new mom blog, an article on losing baby weight and including my broccoli is one of the seven options that you list. Video game blog, write an article on five foods that heighten awareness while playing video games and include a link to your organic. I mean, this is crazy, right? You know what I mean? This is like, no, you wouldn't do that. But you get what I'm saying, right? So you can look at a blog and be like, we are totally unrelated, but figure out a way to sort of weave your content in there naturally. Music blogs, create a post on inspiring creativity, include long walks on the beach, smoking lots of weed, and eating this broccoli for heightened enlightenment. And weightlifting blogs, a list of 10 foods that help lose weight while working out include the broccoli. Does that make sense? So um, there's a lot of people that swear by guest blogging. I mean, we're going to go over a lot of link building tactics right now. There's a ton. There are entire million dollar industries dedicated to link building now. Um, Blog commenting. Um, so this is uh, pretty straightforward. Finding relevant blogs, contributing to the conversation, and placing a link. Um, there's a lot of no follow, do follow implications there. I wouldn't worry about it as much. Just contribute to the relevant topic. Mention your site in a way that helps the reader. Um, any URLs you'll see today are on the site in that little pay with a tweet button. Uh, so you can check them out. But um, blog commenting is a, is a pretty easy, straightforward way to, to get into your, into your topic. Testimonials. When I first saw this idea, I loved it. It's such a good idea. Um, it's really straightforward, right? Think about all the products you've used in the last couple months. Go to those websites, find those contact people, and say, your product's amazing. Here's a quote from me. And if you give me a link, you can publish it. And you'd be amazed at how many people will take you up on that, right? I used your software. It was incredible. Thanks so much. You drove my revenue up 50%. Tommy Griffith, clickminded.com, right? So um, 
don't lie about it. I mean, only only do products you actually like. But it's a good way. It's a good way to um, to get links. Getting interviewed. If you can be an expert or pretend to be an expert about something, there's a lot of local bloggers, news people that would love to interview you. And a lot of the times, online publications um, will link to you. There's a site, helpareporter.com or helpareporterout.com. I think one redirects to the other. But um, it's just di a directory of people that are willing to be interviewed by reporters. Um, so it's a good way to build links if you're, if you're interested. Content marketing. This is uh, this is um, a really good, really good way to build links. Um, writing writing a complete guide or a resource, writing a how-to, um, writing a lot of these steps, these sort of like lists or how-to guides, and giving them to people in order to get links is is really good. People love lists. I don't know why. I always click lists when I see them on Twitter or on RSS feeds or anything like that. Um, debunking a myth is another good piece of content. So these are all under the premise that you'd create it and give it out. Um, but, but you can also create it, keep it on your site, and a lot of people will link to it. People just seem to love to link to these kind of things. And linking out, I really love um, creating like a really good resource for people, creating a page with a lot of links, a lot of information, um, and people seem to always want to link to it. So all this kind of stuff um, is really good. And the big secret about all of this, especially when you, when you create like comprehensive guides, is a lot of the times you don't have to write anything. You just have to collect it. You have to go around the internet and find these awesome resources and collect it for other people. So um, if you're lazy, like me, this is awesome. <laughs> I, I recommend it. Creating a widget. Has anyone ever done this, created a widget? No? Um, I actually haven't done this either, full disclosure. But <laughs> I have some friends that have had unbelievable success with it. You basically create a widget that includes your link. Um, and if people really love it, it'll, it'll spread around. And, um, um, and you can, you can, those links will sort of cascade through the web. If you can get it to hook. It, it's hard to get pe a lot of people to adopt your widget, but it, it can be beneficial. Sponsoring a college club or alumni newsletter. In the SEO world, people talk about all these strategies for how they can like coax kids in college to give them links. And you all being in college, it's, it's funny because like the roles are reversed. But people say that all the time, like, yeah, I just like, I sponsored this volleyball club. It's the state university. And I bought them pizza and beer. And they gave me backlinks. It was awesome. So like, people, you know, they think of it that way. Um, if you could, I don't know who you'd talk to, but if you could find a way to get like every student get a piece of their own domain, or maybe college clubs getting a piece of the domain, that'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, I met, I met some guys at a conference that did this. They, they found alumni newsletters in universities that also include the newsletter in an online version. And so they would sponsor it, and then they get, they'd get links back from the college. So it was a really clever way to, to get links. Um, answering people's questions in forums or Q&A sites. Uh, the, these generally aren't great for rankings, but they can drive a lot of traffic. Um, I don't really like Yahoo Answers. I feel like the people on there are like weirdos and lower quality. But Quora is really good. And I don't know, there's a couple others. Um, asking current customers or your friends or, or offline connections you've made. I really like. Um, working with offline connections. People, no one really trusts a random email, but people will trust you after you talk to them for five minutes. That's just kind of how we work, I guess. So that's worth doing. Linking out, and this is, um, I, I said this twice, but it's proven to me over and over and over again. The big mistake people make when they get into SEO is they understand how the linking, how the ranking algorithms start to work, and then they say, okay, I'm not going to link to anyone. I just want to acquire links and acquire links and acquire links, and I'm not going to link to anyone. And I've always found that the more I link to other people in my industry, including my competitors, I, my rankings always go up. One of the first things I do when I start a new website is link a bunch to my competitors. Um, so just be useful to the user when you're creating your site, and rankings almost always go up. Um, if you have a Twitter profile, this, this site is awesome. 
Um, it's, uh, it's, you can type it in now or you can get it off my site, but you go here and it'll show you 15 links you can get with just your Twitter profile. So make sure your URL is in your Twitter and then sign up for all these sites and it'll give you 15 different links. It's pretty awesome. Um, easy, easy way to get some, some links. So putting tactics into action. We do not need to go through all of these. Again, they're all online for you to take um, if you'd like. But these are some of the advanced parameters to find links. Right? So if I type in used cars plus in title right for us, that could show me a lot of websites that um, would be guest blogging opportunities for used cars. Find websites that have a large number of guest posters already. Right? So in post author guest post plus keyword international students, right? Um, anything like that. And again, you, it's, these are better to refer back to later after this training and just sort of play with. Um, finding college clubs, finding university resource lists, all good ways to, to pull down backlinks. Finding nonprofits that accept donations. Um, Google's made it very clear that they do not like paid links. They do not, do not, do not like paid links, but for one reason or another, nonprofits are like exempt from this. So if you're willing to donate rather than pay for a link, you can usually get one. That's kind of how it works. Um, finding country-specific links, if you're doing international link building, creating a contest. Press releases can be good. Um, do follow blog search engines. Video links have been good. I need to play with that more, but um, creating really good video content and linking back. <laughs> 